Good morning. I got a new chair. Today's a new day. Welcome back to the vlog. It is a Thursday. And yeah, it's a very interesting one. Oh, everyone was alright. And uh, I forgot to do one thing yesterday. And that is Q and A time. Uh, oh, it's Q and A time, everyone. That means it's a part of the vlog where I answer your question to the best of my ability and see if I can um, answer, answer it a way that's satisfactory. And today's question is, why are you still single? <laughs> Thanks. Q and Hi lads, welcome back to the vlog. How's it going? I'm sorry, I apologise if I'm a bit out of it. I woke up quite early because I have a long day ahead of me and I, I wanted to, I finished my edit like really fast. Just feeling a bit out of it today, I don't know. Maybe I woke up on the wrong side of the bed or something. It's uh, yeah, feeling a bit, bit strange today. I got a new chair, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. I feel like it's uncomfortable and comfortable at the same time. Weird. Anyway, today's a busy day, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably just record the vlog now. So yeah, today's a busy day because tomorrow is an extremely busy day. It, it, this is like the pre-hersive, pre-pre, this is not the prehensive like busyness tomorrow, like today has to be busy for tomorrow. In short term, I have a job tomorrow. I have a freelance job with my buddy Joe. It's a pretty big project and uh, that means today I need a lot of preparation. And obviously it's not my first freelance job. I, I, I've done a few in my time, so I thought I would, I would today talk about things you should do before a freelance job. For a bit of context, I do freelance filmmaking as well as freelance photography and I also done a bit of graphic design I would say I'm a graphic designer, but I, I still I still offer it to the best of my ability. It's important when you start out with your freelance career that you make yourself applicable to loads of different stuff. So maybe try and learn skills in areas like Photoshop, places like After Effects. So that learning stuff like that is um is always helpful. It can always help you. One of the things people forget with freelance is that you you are working for someone else. That is that is one of the key things. Because with freelance, you're, you're trying to create someone else's image. You're trying to help them achieve what they want to do. And it's very important that, that you understand that. What I'm trying to say is that it's very easy to get caught up in what you want it to look like, that you forget what they want it to look like. You have to find a balance using your creative image along with their idea, blend them together to create new ideas that look great. How do I get freelance jobs? Now, there's a couple of ways. Number one, contact the person. Contact people that you might want to work with. If you really, really want to work with them, maybe it's like a band or a company, offer that you work for free. That's a very good way to get your foot in the door because if they like your work and they want to hire you again, they will pay or, or they might not pay, but just I'd say at least give it a chance and do it for free because it can be a brilliant experience, especially if you haven't done anything like this before. Business cards are a great way to advertise yourself, but an even better way to advertise yourself is online presence. It's always brilliant to have an Instagram account, Twitter account, Facebook account, promote your service on set of you can post your work, your availability and bookings. All this stuff will build your image and make you look far more professional. You have to be able to liaison with your clients, therefore they have to know where to find you. Reply times are always important. I'd say for clients, don't leave them waiting too long. But also, give them breathing space. You don't want to bombard them with messages all the time. Just leave it for how long you think it is. This is kind of on you. That's, that's a you point. Another thing I'd suggest, this kind of links to yesterday's video. Make something. Make something that's not necessarily for someone. It's going to be very hard for clients to hire you without knowing knowing what you've done. So I'd say get together a portfolio or a showroom and post it online and see if people like your work because not only that you can show people you want to work for, people can see it and ask you to work for them. Especially if you're at college, I'd say definitely pick up photography as well as filmography jobs. Try and keep yourself loosey-goosey. Make yourself available to um, people who need it. But yeah, once you've got the job, this is where the fun part comes in. Recording day. Recording day is very important. You, you have to hit your marks, you have to do everything. A few tips I can give you. SD cards, but get yourself a set of SD cards that you can hold. I'd say 128 gigabytes works brilliant for me, but 64 gigabytes seems to be a bit of a sweet spot for some people. But it's still down to you. That's that's kind of a you thing to figure out for yourself. Don't be afraid to shoot footage. Shoot as much footage as you can. On day, don't pack too heavy. Know your hours, plan your route, how you're gonna get there. Make sure you know where to go. Make sure you know what time you have to be there for. Make an equipment list. This is where the notes come in. Before you go, make notes. Notes are very important. Even if it's this much, it's tiny. It can be the smallest list, but you need to make sure you bring those items on the list that have to be there because you don't want to get there and be like oh crap I've forgotten the camera that would be very worrying if you forget the camera but just make sure you have everything with you because that's the last thing you want to be worrying about post-production is arguably one of the most important parts it's the final stage and it can change anything as soon as you get your footage back home offload that footage onto a hard drive onto your computer make two copies of it don't wipe your SD cards yet until you've finished a project I cannot emphasize this enough don't delete your footage until you've edited it. It's so important. You have to plan for the worst case scenario and you never know what's around the corner. Okay, now we get to the big leagues. This is the actual edit. So obviously, when it comes to freelance work, you're gonna have to be doing notes. You're gonna get, you're gonna be given notes. That is a given. I'll be very surprised if you ever get it right the first time. So what I'd say is do a draft for the first time, unless they say otherwise. 
and maybe send it to them and be like, this is what I'll change for a second draft. And they can spot problems earlier on just so it doesn't take you time to go back and change stuff. Always wait for notes before you continue editing. That's very important. Don't be afraid to do as many drafts as you can. It will take you long, but it's worth it in the end and you, you have to, it's work. But make sure you keep in contact with the client, giving them updates as it goes along. So yeah, that is a few tips before you do a freelance job or doing your first freelance job, you think about getting into freelance. I didn't want to go too into depth with them. Some of these might not apply to you. Maybe doing freelance for quite a long time, but you probably have more freelance experience than I do. This is more for people who are thinking about getting into it, got their first job and they're worrying about it do it to your best your ability i'm sure everyone will that that's kind of it just do it to the best you can thank you for joining me as always tomorrow's gonna be a bit of a weird video it's gonna be i don't really know what's gonna happen tomorrow so i have to wait and see see what happens but yeah uh, without further ado thank you for joining me as always that's all for me today goodbye